Hey everybody, Barker here from Be A Better GM with another five minute frenzy. I got a question the other day from a Go Go World 6 asking me for some help coming up with some place names. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure you meant cities, like city places, not just like taverns or shop names. Uh, so that's what I'm going to base this video off of. Here's the thing, there are so many ways to come up with city names that there's not a, a length of a video that I could create that could cover it all. So I'm going to tell you a good way to get started. That's the way that I use uh, for almost every single one of my worlds. Um, I kind of use, the uh, well, bleh, bleh, excuse me, there are two methods uh, that I utilize. The first method is, actually they're both based on real world. Um, the first method is think about the race that you're creating the city for, okay? Is it a, a lighter, fluffy race like elves or, you know, Eladrin for you Eberroners out there? Uh, or is it a harsh race like uh, dwarves or half-orcs or something that, you know, the lighter races might consider to be more monstrous than, you know, uh, cultured? Um, so for this example, I'm going to use a harsher race. I'm going to go to the dwarven side. This is an example that I've used for my games. I want you to come up with a word for that race or that tribe or that clan or that country, uh, whatever language they speak. I want you to come up with a word for city, okay? Simple word. If you're on the more majestic side of your races, make it more fluffy like uh, la mujer, you know, uh, which is actually Spanish, interesting. Uh, or uh, uh, perani, you know, something like that. If you're on the harsher side of things, Make it simple, maybe one syllable, harsh. Uh, for um, this dwarven example, I picked the word core. That's the word that I picked to mean city for these dwarves. And I picked core because they're subterranean dwarves, so, you know, they're digging down toward the core of the earth. Uh, I also picked core um, because it kind of sounded like quarry, and they're very, again, subterranean and stereotypical. They mine for gems and stone etc. Um, so, so I picked the word core and I thought it would go pretty well. And um, the second thing you do is figure out what this race of people or this nation or, you know, whoever they are, what they revere, what they, what they pay homage to. And I thought that these dwarves would pay homage to a, um, uh, ancestor of some type, or, you know, they, they, they revere their ancestors or their leaders of old who led them in battle. And the way they revere them is by naming their cities after them. So the first part of the city name would be the name of some ancient dwarf, you know, some, some dwarven leader, some, uh, some very revered, very popular person. And then the second part of the city name would be Kor. Okay, so an example would be I had King Duras. Okay, uh, Duras uh, actually freed a, a tribe of dwarves and um, actually liberated this city. So they named the city uh, Durakor. Okay, which of course my players say Durakor because that's how it's spelled, Durakor. And that sounds pretty cool, you know, and it sounds pretty harsh. And then you, you have your Durakor and you have your Paracor and your uh, Lamacor. And you have all of these different core cities around the map. And eventually your players are going to hear you say one of these words, Duracor, Lamacor, any of them. And they're going to they're gonna hear that core and they're going to think, oh, this is a dwarven city. Because you're consistent with your city names. Uh, another way to do this is to put the core uh, as the first part of the word. Actually, not even the first part of the word, but make it its own word that is said first before the second part. Um, this works really well for your more majestic, fluffier races, like your elves. Um, a good example of this would be Lord of the Rings. Uh, you know, Minas Tirith, Minas Morgul. Uh, you have Minas, which when you hear it, you think, okay, that's a settlement. And then you have some word after it to describe that settlement. Um, so play around with those and, uh, and see what you can come up with. Uh, the second method is very simple geographical location. This works really well for humans and halflings. It's excellent. Okay, Riverton. 
uh, The Crossing, you know, um, uh, Edgewood, things that are, you know, nearby. You know, Edgewood would be a town or village or a city that's on the edge of the forest. Uh, the Crossing would be either a crossroads. Uh, you know, that's this, this town was built to be a crossroad between two other towns, like a trading depot. So The Crossing is a nice, nice name. Uh, you know, Riverton. Obviously, it's a town that rivers pass through. It's known for its, you know, its fishing. It's known for its, uh, its trade. You know, its, um, its river-based trade. Geographical locations are just easy. But one thing you should do, since these tactics are just basic things to get you started, one thing you should do is to grab yourself a piece of paper and just write names down as you think of them. Even if you're not playing, like throughout your day, just write names down. That way. Worst case scenario, if a player says, hey, I head east, uh, I think we should go east and see what that town is, you can look at your paper and be like, oh, that's, that's Riverton. Uh, and then that tells you a story about that city. So yeah, keep track of these, these places. Keep track of the names on a piece of paper. Uh, if you're not recording your stuff, uh, you're, you're setting yourself at a disadvantage, trust me. I hope that helped you out. And uh, this is Barker with another now 16 or ugh, a six minute and 16 second frenzy. Now it's longer than that. Uh, I hope that helped. Um, keep tuning in. Uh, subscribe if you'd like. Guys and gals, if you have any questions, throw them down below. I will address them in future videos, future five minute frenzies. Uh, and uh, if you uh, need anything, 